right. Hey, everybody, Dr. Hagmeyer here, and perhaps you're struggling with thyroid problems. Maybe you've been taking thyroid replacement, whether it's uh, Synthroid or Levothyroxine, Armor, or Cytomel, and you've been, you've been taking these hormones for several months, maybe even several years, and you're still feeling pretty lousy, okay? You're still tired. You're still run down. You still have brain fog. You're gaining weight. You know, maybe perhaps you were doing well for a period of time, and all of a sudden, um, you didn't do anything different, but all of a sudden you started feeling all these symptoms of, uh, you know, increased thyroid symptoms, okay? So if this is you, I want to talk to you today about some of the common reasons, or one of the more common reasons, in terms of why this is happening, and believe it or not, this may come down to current levels of stress or even a, a past event that was incredibly stressful to you, okay? One of the ways stress affects your thyroid gland is that too much uh, cortisol can block the conversion of T4 into T3. And as a result, it can cause too much reverse T3 to be made. And that's a big problem for those people that suffer with low thyroid symptoms. Now, you may remember in past videos, I've talked about T4 and I've talked about T3 and I've talked that about that the thyroid gland makes T4 and it makes T3. And T3 is the active part of the thyroid hormone. And the thyroid hormone responsible for weight loss, and, or I should say uh, weight loss or weight gain, brain fog, um, anxiety, depression. In other words, all those symptoms of low thyroid or hypothyroidism are associated with low T3 levels. If you make too much cortisol, your body cannot convert that T4 into T3. And in other words, you can't take the inactive thyroid hormone, which is T4, and convert it into the active thyroid hormone, which is T3. And so ultimately, this leaves you feeling hypothyroid. And again, all those symptoms. This cortisol that I just mentioned is, again, it's a hormone made by the adrenal glands. And when your body's stressed out, whether it's physical stress, chemical stress, emotional stress, spiritual stress, your sympathetic nerve system kicks in. And when this sympathetic nerve system kicks in, those adrenal glands release cortisol. And it's this cortisol that when it's released in the right amount, it actually improves thyroid function. So in other words, it sensitizes the thyroid receptors in your body. But that's only if it's released in the right amount. During times of stress, just the opposite happens. Um, when you have too much or too little cortisol, this is where the problem lies. Now, I'm sure that you've heard of diabetes before, right? With type 1 diabetes, um, type 1 diabetics have a problem within the gland itself. In other words, the pancreas itself fails to produce insulin. Okay. However, with type 2 diabetics, what winds up happening is that um, the insulin or the cells of, of, the, of, the, of the body are non-responsive to insulin. So they manufacture and they produce insulin. It's that the cells aren't responding to the insulin, and that's where the problem is. So you may be saying, well, Dr. Hammer, why are you talking about diabetes when this is a, a video about thyroid problems? Well, here's why. In people who are under chronic stress, your problem may not be the production of thyroid hormones, your problem may be that the cells are not responding to thyroid hormone. In other words, the thyroid hormone is not getting into the cell and making the magic happen. So in these cases, what winds up happening is, is you might have normal TSH levels, you might have normal T4 levels, okay? Yet you have all the symptoms of low thyroid or hypothyroidism. So if you continue to struggle with these symptoms, brain fog, depression, anxiety, weight gain, sleeping problems, it may be time to rethink what's going on inside your body, especially as it relates to your thyroid gland. It may be time to work with another doctor who's going to be able to understand some of the other pieces of your health puzzle above and beyond just simply throwing thyroid hormone at you. Okay? It may be time to look at the bigger picture of why this is happening and now support your thyroid and optimize your thyroid function rather than just putting a Band-Aid on it, which is really all you're doing when you take thyroid medication. And again, I don't care if you're taking uh, synthetic T4 or you're taking natural T4. In light of taking thyroid replacement, this is not addressing the, the root issue of A, how your body is utilizing thyroid hormone, okay? So again, the adrenal glands are a key piece to people that are suffering with low thyroid, okay? Supporting and restoring adrenal function will help to slow down these potentially harmful processes. Um, and symptoms. In closing, there's a couple things I want you to walk away with from this video. Number one 
is that your thyroid makes T3 and T4, and measuring the total T3 and free T3 levels are very, very important. It's also very important to get your reverse T3 levels, okay? You need to have your reverse T3 levels in order to calculate your T3 reverse T3 ratio. Now, many physicians, including myself, believe that this T3 reverse T3 ratio is much more reliable than simply looking at a TSH level alone. So as a reminder, if you have your total T3 levels, in other words, you've had some blood work done and maybe you worked with a doctor and he ran your total T3 levels and he even ran your reverse T3 levels, what you can do is you can go over to my website, drhagmar.com, and in the upper right-hand corner, just type in thyroid calculator, okay? Or you can actually even do it in Google, and it'll take you to a page on my website where you can punch in your numbers, you can punch in your T3 levels or your free T3 levels, and you can punch in your reverse T3 level, and what it's going to do is it's going to give you a calculation. Watch the video that's on that page, and it'll help you understand a little bit more about why we look at that ratio, okay? Point number two, okay, uh, is if you continue to struggle with thyroid symptoms despite taking thyroid medication, thyroid replacement, something is clearly missing. I say this over and over and over again, okay? And that something missing might be the thyroid adrenal piece, okay? Number three, get your cortisol levels checked. Get your DHEA levels checked. Not only can these test levels, uh, not only can these hormones affect your thyroid gland, but they can also cause problems in your sex hormones. They can also throw off your libido. They can also throw off your sex drive. They can also throw off all the things related to your sex hormones, okay? Very, very important. Um, in another video, I'm gonna actually talk about how estrogen and progesterone and some of these sex hormone binding globulins also affect the thyroid level, so stay tuned for those videos. So, I hope you liked today's video. If you did, make sure that you like it. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, if you would, comment in the section below. Tell us what your experiences have been with some of the things that we're talking about today. Also, uh, what's important is that when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll also be notified when we do additional videos like this, and you'll stay abreast on the things that we talk about when it comes to functional medicine. So I hope you liked today's video. We'll see you next time. Take care.